Hey, everybody. How Hi. are you? <laughs> you should just recognize us by now. You've got Melody and Jacqueline. Plus, you have our names on the screen, so it should make it pretty easy. Who do you? And we're talking today about living from your heart, because when you live from your heart, you do create your best whole new world and have the, you know, the, the dreams and the desires of your heart come true because you're living from that heart space. So mm -hmm. if you caught the beginning or the first series we did, which was opening your heart, mm -hmm. we went through seven steps and Melody... Why don't you just recap that all and tell them what they're up for today with uh, appreciation of masculine and feminine energies. Yes. Um, recapping, opening your heart. It, we were just talking about really connecting with your heart, knowing how your heart feels and, you know, getting it to start feeling again, feeling love and, and light and fun and joy. And then we moved to gratitude, which we think or we believe that if you're not grateful for all the blessings and the things that you're given or of your partner and all they are contributing to your life, you are not going to be enjoying your life much. And then we moved to uh, forgiveness. Forgiveness, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we moved to forgiveness and we are talking about forgiving yourself all those mistakes that you think you have made they are done, it's in the past, it's over. And all those things that other people have done to you as well, you should start to forgive them and let them go because that's the only way you can live from joy if you let go of, of things that you know have been done to you. And then we moved on to healing. And healing is just healing your heart from pain and all the other gunk that has happened. Maybe some guy when you were 16 or 12, broke your heart and you've been carrying that your whole life. Now you have 50, whatever, and you're still carrying that. It's time to heal that so you can live from your heart space and with joy. And then we moved to, what did we move to now? After healing, we moved to choosing joy. And this is when you are choosing how you want to live your life, how you want to celebrate your life To Just choose, I want to be joyful and, and live from that space. Because you can do that. No matter what's happening around you, you can live that way. You can live joyfully. Or you can be, you know, have to process some things and then go back to your joy. That's also an option you have. So you, you should make a commitment to live from your joyful place because that helps you to connect more with your heart. And then we ended with, acceptance and appreciation uh, yes appreciation and we we actually are still doing a game where we are appreciating things as they come into our lives because when you appreciate somebody uh, they they feel that whether you tell them or you don't they feel that and when they feel appreciated they are going to be more open to you more kind more generous more willing to do all those things you want them to do and when you appreciate life, you have more joy and more fun in your life as well. So that's the recap. And now we are moving on to, now you are set. You are, you are willing now to have a relationship with somebody, uh, mm -hmm. a man, and you are exploring. This is more, it's not just for singles. You might be married, but you haven't been connecting for years. You're, you're living together, but so far apart, you could have an ocean and nobody will notice. So now we... <laughs> Is it the Pacific Ocean, though? The Atlantic Ocean? Yes. Yeah, I, I don't know. They're big. <laughs> <laughs> the bigger of the two. So, yeah. So when you have that, that distance, but you are craving commit commitment you're craving connection you're craving intimacy you're craving joy you can still benefit from this series as well we're calling it dating but it's it's more like uh rediscovering or discovering yourself and your what you want and you need and also rediscovering men who they really are you know not what society is telling us not what tv is telling us but who we really are at our most core and basic, 
who we want to be, what we need, what we crave, what we want from each other, what we want to give each other, because mm -hmm. that is important. When you start wanting to give each other what the other person needs, then things start to shift because you're not dictating or conditionally giving love. You are saying, I know you need this and this is what I'm willing to give you. I I'll give an example. Yes, uh, I'll, I'll, give, I'll yes. give two examples. I have very a bunch different of questions examples. that are coming up. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm uh, going to best... calm down and wait till you give me the example before I jump on this one. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll give an example. My, my example is when I first started dating Taurai, my husband, my late husband, we, he used to be late for dates all the time, right? Okay. And most girls would say, oh, he's doing that because he's going to another girl and then he'll come after you, blah, blah, blah. And that's, I believed it to a certain extent. And I would ask him, where were you? And he would say, I was, I was cleaning the house and I was making dinner for my dad or I was cooking for my dad and I did the laundry and I did, like he would have a list of chores he would have been doing. And I didn't know him that this well was, at the time. This was while you were dating. Why we were dating? So okay. on a Saturday, because in Zimbabwe, when you're dating, you usually just see each other on a Saturday, okay? okay. okay. So, so on a Saturday, when we were supposed to meet in town, you would wake up and he would do all his chores. And then he would be late because he was a very metho methodical person. Okay. He would be late. He would do all these things methodically. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the day will be nearly over by the time he's finished. He's methodically doing things. So we, we, every time we started our date, we would have a fight because he was a minimum of an hour late. Uh -huh. I'm not joking. Okay. Sometimes there were times when he was two hours late and I would be standing on a street corner and the vendors would be laughing at me and, and they would say, oh, he's not coming. And I would be so embarrassed and so humiliated and, and upset as well. And then he would come and the first half hour would be having a fight. I'll be shouting at him and calling him names and all sorts of things. And I would say, you can't treat me like this. Then one day it occurred to me. One, I didn't like this whole idea of having a fight all the time because it, obviously it wasn't achieving anything. And I thought, hmm, what if I start getting ready? Because I'm, I'm fast. I get things done very quickly. What if I start getting ready at the time when we're supposed to meet? How would that change things? Right. You'd, you'd so, be get, get there later. Yes. But that right. also means I'm not waiting for two hours or one hour. Right. Yeah. yeah if he's waiting for me, it doesn't matter. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I shifted. I started getting ready later and I would get there and he would be 10 minutes late. I could leave with 10 minutes late. And then we would be together and we would enjoy each other and we would have fun and all that. But that's, if I had not done that and I kept insisting on him being on time, that was never going to happen. And this happened. My whole marriage, I was always the one waiting. That's strange for most people because usually men are saying women are the ones who do this. <laughs> In my marriage, it was the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. And I learned to live with that. I learned to say, okay, this is who he is. He's never going to change. Sometimes right. it would frustrate me if I wanted, because I like being early. It would mm -hmm. frustrate me if I wanted to go somewhere and I wanted to get there quick and he's taking his time. Most of the time I just said, okay, you have the shower first. You do what you need to do. And then, you know, by the time I finish with the baby and we go downstairs and we do what we need to do, you'll be done. Or you, at least you'll be getting to getting done. Right. And that worked for us. Okay. So there's that. <laughs> so you, you need to start thinking. What does love mean for you? Okay, so yeah. so let's get this straight. Because I would have been at the beginning of your story when you said you were waiting at the corner, right? And he yeah. wasn't showing up. Mm -hmm. I, I would have said he's he's not interested, right? Yeah. It's, it's not important. Yeah, That's what I thought too. Right? Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is that those thoughts really mm -hmm. come from a conditioning mechanism somewhere in the universe, whether they're other people's opinions of how, what the behavior is. And yeah. we're actually tuning into kind of that broadcast that says, if he's like this, this means that. 
If he's like yes. this, this yeah. means that. Hmm. And we, we are unconnected and to the person and what they really are doing. Exactly. Right? And, and I knew, I knew him. I knew I could read him. I could read his energy. When he was telling me that's what he had been doing, I knew what he would have been doing. I knew he would have been cooking and cleaning and what, doing laundry. You know, I knew that. Right. And he's, he was so conscientious that that's what he felt he had to do, you know, yeah. because that's, that's just the way he was. And then I started thinking as well that, you know, this is the kind of man I want. I want a man who's conscientious, who's doing laundry and who's, who's looking after his dad and who's doing, oh, that's the, because he, if he can do that for his dad and be late for me, mm -hmm. he is going to be more there for me when we are together. Right. So it's very important then to be present yes. to ourselves, right? Because when yes. we're present to ourselves, then we're paying attention to what really feels true to us. Yes, and, and that's your intuition. You need to, to know it and to trust it. And that's a good, because, yes, this whole story over here, and there's so much about men, women, relationships, what you should expect, what you shouldn't put up with, what should, 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 should. And for those of you that know that you when you should, you're just shooting, 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 shooting. <laughs> and... and and just you want to just let go of that and be present and then you'll know the truth. And and I yeah. so, so believe that because if if it was like a different scenario mm -hmm. where you'd heard, oh, if he's ladies doing this, you would have felt that too. And yes. and in those situations, for those that are watching, when you have that feeling that says, Oh, I really do, you know, I don't wanna believe that he's somewhere else with someone mm -hmm. else. But mm -hmm. if you're really feeling that that is have the courage to do it right to ask that question and i had one of those situations as as i was finishing up with my my ex we had been separated mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i was you know he was still asking me out for coffee and you know i i was thinking we were you know he was still working through his stuff and i was giving giving him that space mm -hmm. and then one day it just it just sunk right to me and i thought what am i really here for like, yeah. yeah. Like, why am I here? Because I don't really think he's working things out. Like, I really don't think he's working things out, right? And I just took a mm -hmm. moment. He went to the washroom, and I just because he's like, "Well, should we have another cup of coffee?" Right? Because he's just like, "We're getting along so well." And yeah. I just <laughs> took that moment, and I just like, "Why am I here?" And mm. I clearly got ask him if he's seeing anybody. Mm. And so when he came back to the table, I said, so I just got one question for you. Are you seeing anybody? And he's like, well, yeah, you know, a few people. And I was like, okay, done. Mm. <laughs> right? I was like, I'm happy for you, but I'm done. Yep. Like, mm. you know, that's, I'm done. Like, I just, I needed to have closure. And that was my moment of closure to say, you know, I'm happy to participate in working out when we're actually working things out. Yeah, <laughs> but not was, delusion of that you're working it out when you're working it out with someone else. He was yeah. looking for validation from you that he could still get you to spend time with him. Mm -hmm. That yeah. he was he was still very much important to you that you take time out of your life to spend it with him. Right. Yeah, and once you figure that out and you were out of there. That's it. He had to come figure out things out for himself then. Yeah. But it just, it was so freeing to be able to trust and ask and just go done. Right. So it's the yeah. same. You, you were trusting yourself and going against what everyone else was saying is going on. And you got this great man. Yes. And, and I could have, I, I could have broken up with him because how dare he be late for me. And, yeah. and, and yeah. then. <laughs> And then I don't know what would have happened it, because we, we, we tend to listen to what people say. We tend to listen to people's judgments and everything. And, and it, it doesn't give us any, any benefit. It doesn't give us any value in our lives. Part of, and I'm, I'm really proud of my parents who even raised me this way and give me this kind of awareness that you, if you are feeling joyful inside you, 
<laughs> what you're doing makes you happy. Do it. Right. Don't worry about what everyone else thinks because in the end, they're just doing what makes them happy. Yeah. Well, and in some cases, I don't even know if they're doing what makes them happy. I think some people are just used to being miserable. I think yes. some people are used to suffering and mm -hmm. they're used to gossiping and they're used to looking for issues and problems and all that stuff. So they're happy to seed that in someone else's life, right? Yes, and, and they want validation because some people think suffering is, there's a reward. I'm always saying this, I've said this to so many people, there is no price for suffering. There isn't a point in this earth or afterwards where God or whoever or the source or the universe is going to say, right, my child, you have suffered. This is your reward. I'm telling you now, there is no price for that. No, so I, there yeah. is no need for us to live in a suffering state, making ourselves miserable because somebody else that you don't know and you don't care about is going to comment or say something that you don't like. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm going to take that standard joke about the flood and switch it to, to in the sense of a man, right? And so the water yeah. still on him. And it's like the first guy shows up in in, in the car and says, get in the car. And and the mm -hmm. person, the girl says, uh, I don't think you're exactly what I wanted. You're shorter or whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and so, you know, the next one comes up when it's it's uh, in the boat and says, get in the car. And she's like, nah, I still don't think, you know, and yeah, then. You're not good enough. Uh -uh. And, then, and she says, God, what happened? I was asking. And he's like, I sent you three. Yeah. <laughs> and you didn't want any. So I, I let you be. Yeah. Yeah. And and actually, you by saying that, I have to say something else, which I not not that I'm hiding anything or don't want to talk about. It's it's not looking for validation or anything or people saying, "Oh, you're such a great person." No, I I'm saying this because it's a great example for what we are talking about. When when I met my husband, okay, I I'm sure you know people with albinism, right? Yeah. Yeah, my husband had albinism. So he looked white, but he was black. You get it, right? He looked white, but he was black. Yeah, so when you looked at him, he just looked like a white guy. Right. But he had black parents and black ancestors and all that. It was just a genetic thing. Right, yeah. So, but in, in our culture, they are looked down upon. And they are seen as a curse, as, as a bad thing. And I, when I started going out with him, I didn't realize that people, that's what they really saw. I didn't realize the intensity of people's craziness. Right. So we started dating in Arare, which is a city where you think people are open-minded, but yeah. they were not. <laughs> and they would comment and they would say cruel, cruel, heartbreaking things to him to dare to walk with me, to me because I was so desperate for a man. And it used to, initially, you know, initially it just used to make me angry and I would want to fight back. And then I thought, I can't waste my time fighting with these people because I'm not going to achieve anything. So I would ignore them. And after a while, it just disappeared. It just went, like I stopped noticing. Mm -hmm. And then it just, it just all that, stuff that was going on stopped completely. I never ever experienced it again. But I do remember one day he, he, he looked at me and he said, you know, I'm so sorry. And I said, for what? And he said, for all these things that people say to you, I'm used to it, I was born like this. And I said, well, I wasn't blind <laughs> when I fell in love with you. And I really don't care what they, because they don't know you. They don't right. know how awesome you are. They don't know what a loss it would be for me if I walked out of your life because they care. Because I would never find anyone like you. Right. And yeah. Oh, and that, that is so beautiful that you shared that because that is really the truth for a lot is, is sometimes the gem. Hmm. The gem for a lot of women is a little different than what they expect. Yes. And they really, there's some healing that needs to happen, which is why we're doing the series for them mm -hmm. to receive. And I'm, I'm reminded, and my kids, I've told my kids this, because I had a very wonderful um, 
Glack, good mm-hmm. friend in high school. And he was, he was like my best friend. And yeah. he loved and adored me. But I had such stuff with all the abuse and things that had gone on in my life. I really felt so unworthy. So mm. whoever I was interested in was always the wrong guy. Yeah. And I, I could never... I can I could see that so clearly, like as I got older, that mm. I could never receive his love. I could receive, we could be best friends, we could do everything together, but I could just never receive it because I didn't feel I really deserved it. Yeah, a lot of people have that. Yeah. Mm. So you felt you deserved it and then you were able to stand up and accept it and put all those other comments aside. That's incredible. And all the more, I actually thought he deserved love. And I, in my capacity as a person, had to show him as much love as I could, humanly, to make up for all the other crap that other people did. <laughs> I know that that's just me with my ego. And I get that. But sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I just felt like, you know, if I could love him as much as as humanly or even inhumanly could, that would be great, you know, compensation for all the other stuff that had happened to him in his life. And that's what I did. I just loved him. And and I mean, that's it. In truth, love conquers all, right? When we actually come from an unconditional love space and we just really love, because that's mm. all there is, is we're love. That's really all that's when we're connected, we're present to that's living from the heart is in that love space. Yeah. And that's really opened me up that love, that willingness to, to feel love at its deepest and, and most precious place opened me up to, to today, to me living from my heart space for me, loving everybody who comes in my life because now it's not just about men and women it's it's bigger it's it's me meeting Jacqueline for the first time online and loving her because wow <laughs> she has time to spend with me it's me being with my child and feeling that emotion and thinking wow I love you so much that I could love 10 million people I've got the capacity for that I'm not limiting myself anymore saying, oh, it's only my husband and my child and nobody else. It's it's everybody else, everybody in the world, everybody I come across should feel that love coming out of me. Yeah, and, and from my perspective, um, when we're connected, right, that our hearts are, we're all unified in God, you know, the unified field, if you're a scientist, whatever you want to call it, mm. it it's just that presence and it's all interconnected. And yeah. so it's only natural for me to look at you, Melody, and say, I love you, I adore you, I think you're awesome, because that's the world that I see, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So then that's the world I experience. And if in the past, I would have mm. been looking through it with these glasses and say, you're not good enough, right? Yeah. You yeah. know, this is what's wrong with you. I was looking for things that were broken because, because that's how you felt. That's how I felt, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That I needed to be fixed. And I didn't need to be fixed. I needed to let go of the idea that I was broken. Yes, because you're not broken. Nobody's broken. No, I'm amazingly loving, and that's why. <laughs> <laughs> you just need to be open to receiving that love that God has for you, that you know you deserve and yeah. worthy of, and then everything falls in place. We are meant to be talking about feminine and, and masculine energy. Oh, see, now we're coming right back. <laughs> but that's how I'm feeling for myself, is that I'm bringing the masculine, which was like my first 28 years. I was so driven in masculine energy. And then I brought in the motherly. And now I'm, I'm humming, bringing the masculine and feminine together right here in my heart. And now mm. I'm appreciating it. And we can get back to the topic. <laughs> Yes, uh, and um, there's no there's no energy or the masculine or the feminine are both good qualities. We all need them, and we all have them. Both men and women have those qualities. Women have got the masculine qualities more than men do, and and the vice versa. But also, 
women can actually, because of the X and Y chromosome, we're going into biology now, not too much. We can, we can do both very effectively. We can step into being masculine and, and do great things there. More than a man can try to be feminine. Actually, some men get terrified when they have to be feminine. They think they are not, they're not, they're not manly enough. So they tend to want to stay away from anything that could uh, mar them <laughs> into becoming feminine. But that's a different story. Whereas with the, with, with the feminine, you are softer, you're open to receiving, you're also giving, you're nurturing. When you understand those qualities and how to use them, you win with men all the time. You're not manipulating them. But if you, because if you, if you approach a man from, from a masculine point, there is no way you can win anything with him. Not respect, not love, not appreciation, not affection. So, but if you approach men, um, any man, brother, sister, father, brother, father, uh, uncle, whatever, if you approach them from a feminine point of view, mm -hmm. when you inspire them to be giving and providing and, and protecting, mm -hmm. they will do everything for you. Okay, you so... Know? Being, yeah. okay, so I'm going to take on the hat of, okay, like I'll, I'll be a, one of the women that are out there that are saying, well, hold on. I mean, that's who I am. I am a go-getter. I'm a, I'm a decider. I have, I can do anything a man can do. And what you're telling me now that I'm supposed to quiet that down and let him do things for me. I know we talked about this in the other part of the series, but mm -hmm. I think you need to, this is a conversation that has to be reiterated. Okay. I, I will give you an example of my mom and my dad. My, my dad used to admire my mom because she was a go-getter. She would do everything well. She could make a decision. She didn't need to wait for him when he came home from work to decide to do something. Right. And yet she would allow him to be a man. She would soften. Like, it, it's, it's funny. Even when she was reprimanding him, she didn't do it in a way that she was, yeah, 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 yeah. No, my dad knew he was reprimanded by the way my mom held her body. When she was tense, she was angry. We all knew that. But she never used angry words, ever. But my dad could read. He could see. And she would say, uh-uh, I don't like that. And he would know she's, she means she doesn't like that. She's not saying let's play around and whatever. And so when we are saying you are supposed to be softer, okay, you have a choice, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to live with a man successfully, okay. then you need to understand that when you are with him, you mm -hmm. need to be more in your feminine energy than in your masculine one. Okay, so I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I'm doing so okay so far, okay? Then I'm just like, what does that mean? What does that mean? Like, yeah, you know, because what does that really mean for me doing? Yeah, okay, it just means, it, for me, I'll give you an example of what that meant for me. Okay, my husband, Taura, used to insist that he should carry all the bags. I am well capable of carrying all my luggage, okay? I'm so capable of it. But it made him happy to carry all my luggage. So I allowed him to. I held on to my handbag and he struggled with the luggage. Okay, so... If I'm asked a question, what do you think? Do you want to do this or do you want to do that? I would make a decision. I would not say make a decision for me. You get me? Right. <laughs> yeah, I would still say, oh, I prefer to do this. Or I prefer to do that. Mm -hmm. And he took me, but I would. If we were walking out, if there was someone attacking me, I took a step back because he has to defend me because he needs to feel like he can defend me, even though I can defend myself. Right. Yeah. 
Because then we are not in competition. I'm not trying to prove I'm more masculine than you are. Okay, and it means, it, and here's the kicker, because I'm feeling it, you know, it, I'm breathing through it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I need the, the, the feather. Okay. Um, mm. Is <laughs> by, by me allowing him to carry my bags or open the doors or stand there and say, hey, don't say that about her or, or yeah. whatever. It means nothing about me. It it, yeah. it it doesn't, you know, that's what I'm feeling. It's like, okay, so everybody else. It doesn't say, I can't do it. No. It doesn't say, I need him to do it. No. It just says, I'm, let me see if I can even get these words out, Melody. Okay, I am choosing to allow him to... <laughs> To demonstrate his masculinity because that's how he's demonstrating he loves me. <gasps> okay. <laughs> okay, breathe. <laughs> breathe, Jacqueline. Breathe. <laughs> how does that feel for you? <sighs> Saying that. I think I might have to do it three more times. I'm choosing, I'm choosing to allow him to be his masculine self mm -hmm. by, by giving him the space that he can say, hey, you know what, I can care and take care of you. Mm -hmm. And he chooses to act that way. And I choose to say, I love you. And I want you to be all you're meant to be. And if that makes you feel good, I'm okay with that. Even though I know that I can handle it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and that's because the funny thing is, he would be so proud when he, he's not there and you're handling things. He's so proud of you. He'll be telling his friends, my wife can deal with anything. But yeah. if you are doing it in his presence, you are emasculating him. It's it's a it's a minefield. <laughs> but let yeah. me just say, there is no word for emasculation for women. There's no in, in, in feminism. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there isn't. But there is a word for men because it takes very little, very little to make a man feel small. Even just saying you are not a man can emasculate him. It will take him years to get over that. Melody. We're going to be talking every week on these things, right? So there's a there's a lot that I'm sure that I can bring up to the table mm -hmm. and get cleared here. So the kicker between the feminine and the masculine is we are feminine as mm -hmm. female, but we do have masculine energy in us. Probably from my yes. perspective, the rise of feminism was that rise of that masculine energy. But then we decided yeah. we tried to act like men instead of just being able to know we can take the actions like a man yes right? without needing to be man right and we we are worthy to be what we thought just only men were so we have that aspect and the men mm -hmm. are now coming in and learning that they can receive mm -hmm. right they yeah. can be more loving mm -hmm. that you know they can be more caring as well as though that they're they're hardwired mm -hmm. to be sort of monotonous in thought, focused, mm -hmm. yeah. and taking yes. action to say, mm -hmm. I'm protector. Yes. Right? Yeah. Am I getting it? Yes, you are perfectly. Yeah, you're getting it really well. So every <laughs> time in all my past when I'm like, I don't need you, that's really what I was saying. I don't need you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and hence they're like, yeah, well, why am I around? And, and I'm like, yes. I don't yeah. know. Okay. And and one of the things that we forget as women is men are terrified. Like today's men, today's men are terrified because women don't need them. We don't really need men in our lives. It's a choice we are making. Right. But when we make that choice, we need to make it with our hearts and know that when you are living with a man, you need to live with him feeling better as a man instead of feeling 
worse for being with you. Well, that makes perfect sense, right? Like yeah. why would just a very broken man would would, mm -hmm. would stay with someone who just like a broken female would stay with in a in a relationship that didn't make them feel good. But if yeah. they they love themselves, they want to feel more love being with you, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. And that's the whole point. <laughs> that's what we are trying to do here. Okay, so mm. step one is okay. What, what as you said, whether we're we're married and mm -hmm. in an ocean apart, or we're just a river apart, or mm -hmm. maybe we're maybe we're just not getting along, or we're single. What is yeah. the thing we're doing here with the masculine and the feminine? Just recognizing it to begin with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Recognizing it. Look at the traits. What are the feminine traits and what are the masculine traits? Look at how you use them. When are you masculine or are you ever feminine? Or do you think you're being feminine when you really are just being masculine? And how many times do you feel like you are in competition with men? And so, then move on from there. Yeah. So what did you mean by are you, are you being feminine but really being masculine? I mean, like sometimes women think they're being women, but they are really behaving like men. I'll give an example. I have a friend who has a husband that she's always telling. She's competent. She's like independent. She does everything for herself. She yeah. was always telling her husband that she's the man of the house. <laughs> wow. She was saying, I'm the one who wears trousers in this house. After all, I'm more intelligent than you. I'm more educated than you. I earn more money than you. You know what happened? He left her. And that's, that's, just, that's just sad, in my opinion. Because it didn't need to be like that. You can still earn more money than him because he already feels insecure because of that. You can still earn more money than him, do everything better than him but you don't have to tell him that yeah and and i think well i i believe we're moving past that stage where hmm. we somehow have equated our worth with the amount of money that we make yeah, yeah. you know that mm -hmm. the, the value as us as a human being comes because we are a human being we were gifted with this experience so as we learn to just appreciate ourselves we're appreciating the masculine and the feminine and i think what i'm feeling anyway is when i if i get my head out of this conversation mm. <laughs> and the triggers that are going on <laughs> um it's it's really just appreciating that we have yeah. masculine and feminine just like we have a rose and a tulip we have differences mm -hmm. and we want to mm -hmm. honor them within mm -hmm. ourselves and within our mm -hmm. partners Yes. So that each of us is the best that we are, and together mm -hmm. we're even better. Yes, definitely. We are way better when we are together. We are way so better. Another, mas another feminine thing would be kind of asking masculine is what came to me. And so I'm asking you this question, is this true? So as a female, thinking I'm being female, and I'm like uh, – um, more aggressive, let's say, or assertive in in sexual intimacy. Mm. Uh, is that like being masculine? Like, hey, <laughs> I'm not uh, so sure. But I, what do you mean by aggressive? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm saying in the sense where it's just kind of like we we have stereotypes of guys saying yeah. guys they're like, okay, that's all I want is sex. So if it's mm. like the guy comes home and it's like, great, we can just go straight to the bedroom now, you know, and then you're, you're, you're like done with them for the night. Um, is that like being, being feminine, but really being masculine in that yes. sense? Yeah. Okay. And he feels used. Yeah. Just like if you have sex with him and then you ask him for something, he will feel cheated and used. He probably will give it to you because he wants to make you happy, but he will feel cheated and used. So don't do that. <laughs> He's laughing like your husband did. Yeah, exactly. Or you, you find out I will rose out laughing. But he was a very, 
he was a very conscious person. He knew what he wanted and what he didn't want. Mm -hmm. And he didn't have any problem expressing it, which really helped me. Really, really helped me. Because the fact that he gave me feedback when I was doing silly things right. helped me to grow up and also to realize that, you know, we don't need to play all these games. We can be honest with each other and still be loving to each other. Right. Hmm. This is a very big conversation. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and I, I, so what, what does somebody do now that they've been listening to us, right? And they're going, wow, I've got work to do. How, how do they begin? Besides just starting to maybe take a mental checklist. I mean, do you have some recommendations? Is there a course they can start with you? Do they yes. do a consultation? What do they need to do? They have two options. They can start a course with me. The love quick start C course, and and yeah, and that course is, covers most of the things that we talked about today, and some of the things we talked in the previous series, and we will talk about later. And we do get into detail about sex and all that, and and how to have more fun, and joy with it, and you know all that other nice, good, juicy stuff, <laughs> <laughs> and. And yeah, and, and just how to to appreciate yourself, appreciate your feminine. Because if you find yourself acting more masculine all the time, it also means you are rejecting your feminine. You need to know why you are doing that. Is it conscious? Is it subconscious? Is it teaching? Is it society? Is it what you believe that women are lesser than men? What is it that's causing you to do that? And... Mm -hmm. And the other, the another way of, of getting help is book an appointment with me. I'll give you an hour. We will talk about what we, what, what, how to help you if we are a match, if you're willing to actually do the work, because this is serious, guys. I'm, I'm very passionate about this, but I only work with people who actually want to see change in their relationships. So if we were to um, just give them, let's say, an exercise to do, they're still not sure if they want to make that direct contact. Is there something between now and next week when they join us that they could um, journal about, like really do an, intro, do you have an exercise that says, like, just like you said, is uh, maybe that's it. Maybe that's your comment about what is it about the feminine? Because for me, I know I never, I thought my mom was powerless. Mm. So I wanted to emulate my father. Uh -huh. So I, I did not want to be the feminine. But yet mm. when I became a mom, so I still had this one masculine energy, but in the background, it was all like, you're worthless. Yeah. 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 Okay. So mm. it was again, re res resisting that feminine energy until mm. I, I saw that and I could process that all right? And heal that. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe that's what you need to do is decide, are you more feminine and masculine? What what are your traits? Something along those lines mm -hmm. so that they can move to the next step? Yes. Yeah, I think that's that's an excellent idea. Just explore that and see what, what, what are your motivations? What's driving you? Is it fear? Is it love? What is it? Is it, are you even unconscious of what's driving you? Because most people are unconscious. They don't even realize that's what they're doing. So that's a, I'm going to write here. This is, let's see, what is driving you, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In your relationship. What did you say about that? Is, is it, it fear or is it love? Fear or love. We want to hear your comments. Mm -hmm. And shares for next week. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That sounds very, very good. I feel like we did tremendous amount of work for the whole feminine masculine world out here today. We've really mm -hmm. um, set a new <laughs> conversation in motion, Melody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is there anything you would like to complete on? Uh Really, it's just that. Live from your heart. Love freely. Enjoy life. Have more joy. 
you know, that's what we are meant to be doing. Just do that. Life will be easier. <laughs> and on that note, we'll be with you again next week. Yes. Thank you. Bye.